All right, in this quick video, I want to show you how to evaluate trig functions with a calculator. Um, it's not always the case that we have our 35, 35, uh, sorry, our 45, 45, 90 triangles and our 30, 60, 90 triangles to help us. Sometimes, you know, in word problems or just probably in, in the real world in applied math, you have, to, uh, you have to evaluate angles that are not nice angles. So let me just show you how to do that. So the sine of 74 degrees, for instance, um, to do that on the calculator, simply go to uh, your calculator. Now, the, here's the, the thing you want to keep in mind. you got to make sure you're in degree mode because we've learned that angles can be expressed in radians and degrees. So go to mode first and go down. See how we're in radians? We want to be in degrees for this problem. So press over, enter, and then we're good. So go to second, hit second mode, go to your quit screen. And now you hear this, you see the sign button, sign 74. It knows you're in degrees. And the answer is 0 0.961. Uh, 0 0.961. Right. 0 0.961. Now a lot of students, you know, they're like, wait a minute, I thought you said that, I thought you said that the trig functions always give a ratio. How come it doesn't give, you know, something divided by something? Well, just remember that fractions and ratios can always be written. Uh, they can be written as decimals, right? Like one half is the same as 0.5. All right, so they, it, certainly this is a, value, uh, a valid ratio. It's it's a it's a, just another way to express uh, whatever the ratio is. Cosine of pi over 15. Now here we want to look carefully. There's no degree symbol, right? So that means I'm in radians. Okay, radians are sort of a unitless um, measure of angles. They, they don't get a, any symbol. Uh, so if you see the degree, you're in degrees. And make sure your calculator's in degrees. Students lose like half points all the time in, in tests and quizzes because they just forget to switch modes. We're in radians for this one and for this one and for that one because there's no degree symbol. Okay, so let's do the cosine of pi over 15. Uh, we got to go to mode. Go back to uh, go into radians, and now we're going to do the uh, what was it? Cosine of pi over 15. Cosine of pi divided by 15, and we get 0.978. Okay, so hopefully that's simple enough. Now we have this cotangent. Of 0.89 cotangent. Well, if you go to your calculator, you'll notice there is no cotangent button. So that's not a mistake. So what do we do? Well, we have to remember that cotangent is uh, the reciprocal of tangent. So if I want to write the cotangent of 0.89, what I can do is 1 divided by the tangent. Of 0.89, and that's how we get around the fact that there are no buttons on the calculator for tangent for a cotangent. So we're going to do one to evaluate cotangent. You got to do one divided by tangent of 0.89. So the calculator people are smart. They're like, we're not going to waste the button. They're not going to waste the button on something that people can do if they just figure it out. So that's equal to 0.81. Okay, so. So don't don't go looking for that cotangent button. 0.81. Same here, secant of three. You'll notice there's no secant button on the calculator, but secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So this is the same as one divided by the cosine of three. So we'll do the cosine. That looks kind of weird, but it's it's fine. Cosine of three. So to do secant, we do one divided by cosine. Of three to get negative 1.01. 1. Um, okay, so by the way, see these blue buttons, the sign with the negative 1, cosine negative 1, those do not need, need reciprocals. Those are inverses. We're going to deal with those later in the course. Don't think that those are shortcuts. To do secant, you have to do 1 divided by cosine there. Uh, shoot, I forgot what it was. Negative 1.01. Zero, 01. And there you go. That's how you evaluate them with the calculator.